Hello, today I'm going to go over how to set up a C++ development environment on Linux. To start, we're going to open the terminal. You're going to have to get used to this if you aren't already. I usually use the terminal for most things, and so I'm used to it. But I will try and go over some of the basics for y'all that haven't used one before. So, in the terminal, we just type commands and the computer does them. It's just like going through a GUI in any other way. So, let's start with our first step, which is installing packages. We're going to type sudo apt-get update. Now, this doesn't actually update anything. This simply fetches the latest of everything so that we know what to update, if anything. Of course, I've already done this recently, so there's nothing to update. Next up, we are going to type sudo apt-get install um, and then we're going to type a list of packages that we want to install. So first up is clang, that's our C++ compiler. Then we're going to need lib clang 11 dev and git, which is a tool for source control, and zlib 1g dev, I'll explain why we need that later, and cmake. And I think that's it for now. If I forgot anything, I'll just install it along the way. And as you can see, this is going to do quite a bit of stuff, and just go ahead and hit yes. So, while these are installing, I'm going to go ahead and also install Visual Studio Code, or at least download it. To do that, we're going to go to Firefox, and we're going to search for Visual Studio Code. I believe the website is code.visualstudio.com. And it is. Here we are. I'm going to download the .deb file because I am on Ubuntu Linux. There we are. I'm just going to save it. Don't open it with a software install. I have not had good luck with that. And as you can see, it's done downloading. So what else are we going to need to download? Probably nothing because we have the git tool. So the C++ analyzing tool we're going to use to um, find the errors for us and just generally help us code is CCLS. And here's the link for it. I'm going to have this in the description. So all we need is to go to the code button here and copy this URL with the little clipboard button there. All right. So we're just going to keep this in the back of our minds, but for now we can install the Visual Studio Code package that we downloaded. So we're going to do cd for change directory to downloads. And then we're going to list everything in this directory. You can see there's only one thing, and that's the Visual Studio Code download. And we are going to type sudo dpackage-i dot slash code and just hit tab to fill out the rest of it because it's quite long and it may be different for you if you're watching this at a later date so just type code and hit tab while that's going we're also going to use the git tool real quick we're going to open another terminal which you do by right clicking on it and hitting new window and in this one we are going to go cd downloads once again and of course as I do this the other one just finished and we are going to type um, git clone and then control shift v here and it will paste the link that we copied earlier and you can see that is now copied not only the source code of today but the entire history of any changes that anyone has ever made to this code. So the reason we have downloaded the source code is because we need to compile CCLS manually. This is one downside of using CCLS, but I believe it's the best language server for Linux. Feel free to discuss in the comments. All right, in here we have index tests, license, readme, source, third party, but the most important file is this one. It's called cmakelists.txt and it's what a build system called CMake uses to tell the compiler how to compile all of this code. Because if you look inside the source directory, you can see that there's quite a bit. So 
to begin, we are going to do CMake hyphen B build and type dot. That represents the current directory that we're in or the current folder, if you prefer that terminology. And as you can see, I've forgotten a step as expected, but it tells us exactly what to do. It says, please initialize rapid JSON get submodule as the currently installed version is too old. So just type this command and all will be good. So let's just copy and paste that. And there we go. We are now ready to run CMake again. Just hit the up arrow to get back to old commands. And there we are. Everything is done. Just kidding, we still have to compile it. We have now told the compiler how to do it, and we just need to go into the build directory. Actually, we don't. There is now a directory called build that we created by typing hyphen b build to CMake. And so CMake has put everything that it uses inside the build folder for us. So now all we need to do is type CMake double hyphen build space build. It's saying that we are going to build the build directory now. And I'm also going to type hyphen J space four. J stands for jobs and it's how many CPU cores it's going to use to do the compilation because otherwise this can take quite some time, especially if you have a slower computer. All right, while that's compiling, let's go ahead and configure Visual Studio Code now that we have it installed. Here it is. All right, so right off the bat, I'm going to go install something that y'all don't need to use, but I use the Vim extension. And that's just going to change the key bindings in a way that makes it very hard to use if you don't know exactly how to use Vim. So I recommend not installing that unless, unless you really want to. All right, we are also going to install the CCLS extension, this one. And we'll install the C++ extension. This is the main C++ extension. It gives us a lot of goodies, but it's not super great at the IntelliSense part, which is why we have CCLS. All right, let's go ahead and close and reopen Visual Studio Code because I have been burned before by things not working properly in VS Code whenever you install new extensions. We're gonna hit this big open folder button. Also, I'm gonna uncheck that box since I don't wanna see the welcome thing every single time. All right, here we are. I'm gonna to go to my documents, create a new folder called first CPP project and hit okay. Here we are in our new project that we've just created. Now our project is not nearly as complex as CCLS. So let's install CCLS. First, we're going to do CD build to get into the build directory. And as you can see, there's an executable here called CCLS. So we're going to copy this into a folder that um, we have on the path, which currently is not on the path. So first we're going to type mkdir for make directory. Tilde represents the home directory. As you can see, I'm in tilde slash downloads. That's actually slash home slash your username slash downloads. Tilde slash bin. This is where I like to put executables that I've installed myself so that they're separated from ones that Linux has installed for you using apt-get. And we are going to do cp ccls tilde slash bin. And now if we list what's in tilde slash bin, we will see ccls. But that's not enough to run it like a normal program. We first need to add it to the path. So let's go back to the home directory. Every dot dot that you put here will take you up one more directory. And you can see we have a bin directory here now, but actually what we're going to do is type in nano space dot bash rc. And this is where our settings are for bash. We're just gonna go to the very bottom and type the following line. You don't have to understand this completely, but all we're doing is saying that programs are in the home slash bin folder. Export path equals dollar sign path colon dollar sign home slash bin. And then hit control X and hit Y and just press enter here. 
Now, if we restart our terminal, which I will also close the other one that I opened, then we can type ccls and see that it looks like it's kind of hanging and doing nothing. That's because you're not meant to run it as a program, and we're kind of stuck here now. To get out, just hit Control c That's why you can't copy using Control c by the way. Okay, so CCLS is working. Let's go ahead and create a CPP file. We're going to call it main.cpp. And as you can see, Visual Studio Code has detected that we are in the C++ file, and it's activating some extensions for us. And once again, I'm having trouble with CCLS. What a strange problem. Oh, it's because we forgot to restart Visual Studio Code. Now that we've added to the path, um, all the applications that were running before do not have that updated. So now we should see CCLS showing up in the bottom left corner. Oh, bottom right corner. There it is. All right, I'm going to start typing some C++ code here. If you don't understand what I'm typing, don't worry. I'll explain it in a later video, maybe. Int main, open parentheses, close parentheses, return zero, semicolon. And there we go. That is a complete and working C++ program. We're going to hit control tilde to open up the integrated terminal. And we're going to type clang plus plus. This is the C++ compiler that we installed much earlier. And we're going to type main.cpp. And you can see that it looks like nothing happened, but we have a new file here called a.out. That's actually our compiled file. And if we type dot forward slash a.out, it will run it. And you can see that nothing happens. That's because this program doesn't actually do anything, but it was a success. All right, now you are prepared to create and run C++ programs on Linux. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.